So now we're going to spend the rest of the time on how does the neural tube become the mature brain. And our challenge here is illustrated right here. This is the, at the end of four weeks, this is what the neural tube looks like. It has this, this at the back end, it has this simple tube that's going to become the spinal cord. Uh, the end of the spinal cord is called the conus medullaris. The end of the neural tube is going to become the conus medullaris. No problem there. Very simple, straightforward, great. The, uh, these vesicles, these swellings, are going to give rise to the brain. And the junction between the spinal cord and the, and the brain is the spinal medullary junction. That's going to happen. This is viewing the brain from the back. This is viewing the brain and spinal cord from the side. And the spinal medullary junction is going to sit right where the foramen magnum is, right where the skull begins and the vertebral column uh, ends. But the, the curiosity happens with the front end of the neural tube. The front end of the neural tube is called the lamina terminalis, a, a, a useful uh, name to remember. This lamina terminalis is going to get buried deep within the brain. And that's our challenge. We're going to figure out how do you go from this tube and remain a tube and yet have the front end of the tube buried deep within. Um, and the answer is that it gets the front end of this gets covered with the exploding telencephalon. OK, so let's let's begin our journey here. So the three vesicle stage at, we're going to go over the board. Um, the, the board, what I'm going to draw and what's on the slides is going to be the same thing. Um, but I believe that this will, will help you just to see um, the process. Okay. So what we have is three swellings and then the spinal cord. So here's the spinal cord. Here's the frontmost swelling, the middle swelling, and, uh, and the, the caudal swelling. This is called the prosencephalon. This is called the mesencephalon. And this is called the rhombencephalon. The prosencephalon is going to become the forebrain. This is going to become the midbrain. And this is going to become the hindbrain. The rhombencephalon is going to become the hindbrain. These two, the mesencephalon and the rhombencephalon, the midbrain and the hindbrain, we're done. We're all good. The one that's going to complicate our lives is the prosencephalon. That is going to divide into two vesicles. So now we have mesencephalon, rhombencephalon, spinal cord, and now we have telencephalon and diencephalon. Diencephalon is simply a, another, uh, the developmental origin for the, um, the, the thalamus, and we can call it the thalamus. But the telencephalon is the developmental origin for a, uh, an adult structure that has no other name. So we're going to also call that adult structure the telencephalon. What is contained in the telencephalon? Cerebral cortex. The core parts of the basal ganglia, which are the striatum and the globus pallidus, and the amygdala. <clears throat> now, immediately when this telencephalon uh, divides, it immediately invaginates and it produces this. Let's go back to the slides where we can see that. So here you have what's happened is you have rhombencephalon, mesencephalon, diencephalon, and now you have two telencephalic hemispheres. There's one telencephalic vesicle that divides into two hemispheres, a left hemisphere and a right hemisphere. And, they're, and the place where they join is off to the side so that the lamina terminalis is the front end here of the diencephalon. 
that's now the front end of the neural tube on the midline. Okay, before we get into how this gets buried, we're gonna take one side, uh, side trip. And the side trip emerges from the diencephalon. The diencephalon has an outpouching that is called the optic vesicle. That's right here. And that outpouching is gonna become the optic nerve and then the retina, both the neural retina and what's called the pigment epithelium. Because the retina and the optic nerve derive from the diencephalon, they are part of the central nervous system. Now they're not part of the brain because the brain is what's contained in the cranium and they are actually outside of the cranium. They, they leave the cranium and go to the orbit, but they are part of the central nervous system. And what that means is that when you gaze into somebody's eyes with an ophthalmoscope, which allows you to get through the pupil and visualize the retina, you are looking at the central nervous system. That is extremely powerful. The retina is the window to the central nervous system. It's the w window to the brain. It's the most accessible with absolutely no invasion, no invasive uh, procedure. It's the way that you can access um, looking at the brain. So if you were to use an ophthalmoscope and look at the retina, this is something that you would see. Right in the middle is a pit that's called the fovea, and around that is a central area called the macula. That's, what you, that's where central vision is supported. It's very important if this degenerates, and we'll look at that much, much later, there, there are problems with vision. But what we wanna look at is this piece right here, which is called the optic disc. The optic disc is where the nerve head joins the retina. And so imagine that here's, here's the central nervous system, here's the optic nerve in the ret retina, if there is extended pressure here in the brain, that pressure can push on the nerve and increase the pressure on, uh, on the optic disc. And you will see a discoloration of, of the optic disc. And so this is a non-invasive way to detect changes in pressure in the, uh, in the brain. And as such is an incredibly valuable tool. So in the next, uh, in the next section, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how the dorsal telencephalon comes to cover over the lamina terminalis. <laughs>